Welcome to Space News from the Electric Universe, brought to you by the Thunderbolts Project at thunderbolts.info. Among the top space news stories of 2015, we have seen dramatic affirmations of the electromagnetic connection between the Earth and the Sun. With each new discovery, the Sun's profound influence on Earth's climate and weather becomes more self-evident. However, it seems that the electrical nature of the Earth-Sun connection and its role in so-called climate change remains nowhere to be found in the popular climate change debate. Today, we check in on one of the leading skeptics of the theory of man-made climate change, solar physicist and meteorologist Piers Corbin. Earlier this year, Piers appeared in a documentary that aired on the BBC's Radio 4 program called What's the Point of the Met Office? After a firestorm of protests from activists, the program was subsequently removed from the BBC's iPlayer playback facility. We asked Piers what he thinks of the BBC's policies and their coverage of climate change. No, the BBC is totally not impartial um, for climate change and it uh, propagates the climate change religion all the time. They have a small amount of sceptics, if you like, or climate realists as I would call them at times in order to simply claim they have balance but they, in reality they don't have balance they're totally biased for example when they're reporting any weather extremes around the world they repeat and pipe up anything involving warmth and they ignore things involving cold or give them a a, a short shrift we are told that the scientific consensus today is that anthropogenic global warming or climate change is real however how accurate have the climate and weather forecasts been of advocates of this theory? The UN climate model and what the BBC cites and the British Met Office cites are the same thing and they are complete nonsense and they have failed utterly and absolutely. If they were economic forecasts uh, or forecasts from a political party of, of employment or something, they would be thrown out of office. Or if they were running a business, they were, they were the managers of a business, they'd be closed down. They, they said basically that world temperatures should have been rising continuously for the last uh, 15 years. Um, well, they have not been. They had a prediction of very steep rises and in fact the temperatures did rise a bit and then levelled off and are now declining under satellite measurements. Under fiddled uh, surface data, they uh, essentially show that they're static but that data is fiddled and they select stations to give the story they want. Like many other skeptics of man-made climate change, Piers emphasizes the importance of the sun's influence on climate and weather. The sun and the earth are connected by various channels of communication. Obviously there's gravitation and uh, the orbit of the earth around the sun, but the main energy transfer is from radiation and also particles beamed out of the sun charged particles. The radiation is sunlight and obviously gives us the general temperature of the, of the globe. Um, the way the globe is wo works though is that it's a magnetic body and the sun is also a magnetic body and the particles coming out of the sun uh, are charged particles so they're guided by the magnetic fields connecting the earth and the, the sun. These rush of particles called the solar wind which comes at a million miles an hour does affect the upper atmosphere where there's a lot of electric currents going on very high up um, and also the middle atmosphere where the particles in some respects probably initiate droplet formation or uh, they affect the way the circulation of the upper atmosphere that affects the way the jet stream which is the upper air moving around the globe that affects that and the jet stream then essentially controls weather patterns so the basic point we make is that the Sun-Earth magnetic and particle connection essentially governs the behaviour of the jet stream, which is the main governor of weather types and the arbiter of weather extremes. What we have is the jet stream essentially marks the boundary between colder polar air and warmer air towards the equator. And under the uh, global warmest prediction, the jet stream should be further north and shorter and generally we will have warmth but generally benign warmth. However, what we do have instead is a longer jet stream which is further south and 
It's got a lot of waves in it, and these are characteristic of periods of low solar activity. So in these, wa these wavy patterns mean that sometimes you can have very warm parts for the north when air, warm air is brought from the tropics. And, but more often, uh, because it's generally further south, this jet stream, you have cold blasts coming from a long way north going south. And that is what's giving these extreme uh, cold spells in places, extreme warm spells in places, and extreme storms where, uh, where these type of uh, air masses meet. We asked Piers what he thinks of the notion that human activity is causing an increase in extreme weather on Earth, such as hurricanes. It is a complete, deliberate lie, and it's put about by these people who know it's a lie. The fact is, there's actually been less hurricanes. Uh, some of them have been very extreme hurricanes, but there's been less hurricanes in the USA, which is the best place in the world where they are counted. All of these extremes that have happened are driven by solar activity. Uh, as an example, the, one of the ones the warmest quote most is the uh, Typhoon Haiyan. It caused a lot of damage. So because there's a lot of damage, they said it must be CO2. Well, if you looked at what was actually happening to Haiyan, as it was approaching the Philippines, it so occurred that the sun was in a very active, short phase of solar flares and so on. And uh, we'd categorize these, we predict these phases, and this was called an R5 period. It's a red five, a red weather or dangerous weather, top level five. And well, and during these periods, typhoons or tropical cyclones always get more excited. So it so happened, high end was in the right place at the right time, or if you like, the wrong place at the wrong time, for solar effect to whack it up, and it got ramped up as it approached the Philippines and caused utter devastation. And that was predictable. Well, we've got a general prediction, which we made some years ago, that because of the uh, wild jet stream era we're in, which of course is also a mini ice age, period in, in the sense that if you're at the right end of these uh, wavy jet streams then you're going to get very cold weather. So we're in a mini ice age stroke um, wild jet stream era which means there will be a lot of dramatic extremes in uh, in the world especially in America where you can see them from one side to the other so it might be very warm in the southwest and cold in the northeast on, uh, on some occasions the other way around. For continuous updates on space news from the Electric Universe, stay tuned to Thunderbolts.info.